Hi guys, today we'll be learning about the distributive property. Now, the distributive property does come in multiplication because the topic that we're covering currently is multiplication. However, distributive property is not one of the multiplication properties for a reason because it's not usually used in the multiplication property. This property is mainly, you will find it in algebra and we will cover that topic, but not for now, we're just in the fifth grade curriculum. So distributive property, just to give you a heads up on that, what the definition of distributive property is, is to expand or break apart the numbers to understand the problem better. Let's say you are given the problem 65 times 2. Now some of us can, like if you just look at the problem, you can solve it in your brain. Now we know that 5 times 2 is 10, so that will be a 0 here and then add a 1 here. and that's So we know the answer would be 130. But let's say, like, for those of you, for those of us, sorry, who can't do that in the brain, and you know what, it's okay, because I think that's better if you write your problem out visually, because, like, a visual aid is always better, because you can see what you're doing. So, now you have to solve this problem. So, this is where the distributive property part comes in. You're going to break apart the numbers. So, 60 and 5 will become, <coughs> excuse me, 60 plus, I'm sorry, not plus. So this will become 60. And now look at the number over here. You will do 60 times 2, because the, there's a multiplication sign here, right here. 60 times 2, and then plus 60. Wait a minute, I'm sorry, not 60. 5, because first we did 60 times 2, and now we're doing 5 times 2. Now this is the, the tricky part, like breaking apart, like you don't know what numbers you're breaking apart. Always keep in mind. Split that first number in half, the one with the two digits. Use the t this is since six is in the tenths place, we'll know it's sixty times two. Yeah, and then this is only this is in the ones place, so we'll know it's not gonna be fifty, it's gonna be five. Five times two. So sixty times two and five times two. All we have to do now is solve the parentheses because remember, whenever there are parentheses, you have to solve them first. You can't just go ahead and do, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna go like two times five or two plus five is seven. No, that's gonna get you a total different out of the world answer. So 60 times 2 is 6, if you just remove the 0 for now, let's say there's no 0 here. 6 times 2 is 12, add the 0, 120. So this equals 120. So we can just cancel that out. Plus, bring down the plus sign, cancel that out. The reason I cancel that out is because you know, that way is more clear that way, or else you get confused, like, what was I working with? So, you know, that's why. And then you have 5 times 2. 5 times 2, we know that's 10. So let's just cross that out. And now we'll just go ahead and erase this. So now we're left with 120 plus 10. All we do now is write this out, 120 plus 10, and add, simple addition. So 0 plus 0 is 0, 2 plus 1 is 3, and then 1. See, I told you the answer would be 130. <laughs> so that's why now that um, we have 130, now if you did not already solve that in the beginning, we can always go back and try it out ourselves. So our original problem was 65 times 2. We can go ahead and check it. So 5 times 2 is 10, 0, 1. 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13, 130. Matches up, and we are done. And if you want to find out more about this topic, you can always visit our website. There you will find more examples, and you will find more like a step-by-step -step visual aid. And like I said, visually it's better because you understand it better. And we'll see you guys next time.